Welcome, welcome to my channel. Okay, got some exciting news. It, you'll have to watch to the end of the video because I am going to have the biggest giveaway that I've ever done because it is towards Christmas. There will be a Google form. You must be subscribed. Well, I'll get the details of it all at the end of the video. I am on my way to the store. We're having meatloaf. And I gotta go get some crackers. And tomato sauce. Of course, I can do with that some tomato sauce. I can use ketchup. I do that all the time. My mother likes to reminisce. I mean, because we lived at Chula Vista. And I went to a school that was near the San Ysidro border, okay? And I used to get picked on, bullied by the kids. And it was recess, and they were, they never hit me. I was never hit by a bully. It was just like name calling. But I also had kids that would defend me. So, anyways, they were teasing me. They were bullying me. And I told them to shut up. That if they continued, that I was going to run away from school. Well, that stopped them, but they didn't believe me. And the bell rings, and I told mom, I said, I had no choice. I mean, I was seven years old. I told them if they did stop, I was going to run away from school. They didn't believe me. I had to do it so I didn't lose face to show them that I would, and I did. And the funny thing is, the teacher didn't run after me. Nobody actually tried to stop me. But I walked completely off school grounds. The school didn't even call the police. They called my mother, who had turned, called the police. Okay? And the only way at seven that I knew, because we're a couple of miles, we're, we're, we're a distance from the school, right? Was a school bus route. And I remember at one point, some guy pulled over, bald head, and he just looked evil to me. And I wasn't going to, he'd asked me if I want to ride. I said, nope, I was not getting in that car. So he leaves, and I go to across this bridge, and a cop car comes by. And he's got the like the speaker thing on and he's he's calling my name i stopped now my mother thinks i hid i didn't hide i literally stopped to look and then i continue walking no, wait a minute that's wrong i did i stopped i looked i crawled down under the bridge till i thought the cop was gone then I cut, yeah, I come back up and I walked every single bus stop. Because that was the only way I knew. Now, I don't know what was in my seven-year-old mind. I guess I really thought mom, and the man who raised me, dad, would never find out. And I get near find a bus stop where they would let me off and I go to take the shortcut through the field there when I see it, my dad and I went to make a U-turn while he see me puts me in the car drives me to my grandmother's house and the first thing my mom did first she hugged me and then she spanked my butt and I, it confused me I said well you were happy to see me now you spanked me in my butt 
Which is it? You not happy to see me? I couldn't figure out what the big deal was. But yeah. And they'd always lose me at the San Diego Zoo. We go to the zoo and when you walked in there was the Flamingo Habitat thing. Anyways, I would get at some point during the visit to the zoo, I get so into watching the animals that they would go to wander off and I wouldn't notice and I'd find myself alone. I didn't care. I said, it's fine with me. And I start walking the zoo looking at animals. They always found me. But I wasn't concerned at all. I says, well, I'll just go look at the animals. But on my eighth birthday, my mother asked me what I wanted. I wanted the San Diego Zoo. I wanted to go to the San Diego Zoo for my eighth birthday. And I did. They had a special area. And it made me feel so important because even though it was supposed to be private, the like the fence and everything around it, people go through the zoo to see who was in there having a party. And so people would look. That was the one birthday in all my life that really stood out. And we always got to choose what kind of cake, birthday cake we had, what flavor. They, I always wanted German chocolate cake. Every year, German chocolate cake. So every year I had German chocolate cake for my birthday. Now, Christmas time, we would know what some of our presents were because we were little sneakies. We go it we got really, really good at moving the paper just enough to see what it was without them actually noticing. We did get caught one year. It was a gift from my biological sperm donor father. Set and they were I guess rings and necklaces. She took them away from us. We never did get them back. At least that I can remember. In Halloween, we didn't really get costumes. She dressed us up in stupid sheets. But we didn't care. We'd go out trick-or-treating by ourselves. You know, seven, six, seven years old. Yeah, we went by ourselves in the neighborhood. We've been taught about, you know, across the streets. We knew how to cross the street. We were taught that very, very young. You know, look out for cars and what have you. And then we'd get home. My best friend name was Tammy. And it's surprising how a death could tear up a friendship. But her father was flying one of these small planes had crashed. And the reason they couldn't find him is because the snow had completely covered the place. So when they were flying over, they were flying right over without seeing it. And then some other people got in a plane to look for him themselves. They crashed. They found them. And unfortunately, they did. They, I mean, they, it was closure for the family. They found it. But they found it Christmas morning. They found him Christmas morning. The snow had started to melt. It revealed the plane. They found it. They were dead inside. Um, I don't remember if maybe they would they crashed. They might have still been alive. Were trapped in there. Used up the air. Died or died on impact. You know, it was only about eight nine when it happened. And it's just like we never saw the kids again. Um, didn't I didn't go over their house. You know, when you're that young, how do you deal with your friends? death. And <laughs> somebody always been a house. And they moved away. 
we did see the brothers a few years later. We were at a park, but I never did see her because we ended up moving from San Diego to San Jose, California. And I stayed there till I was 13. And when I decided, I, I went to visit my biological father that summer because that's what we did. Like one summer, my brother would go there. He stayed there for three months, then come back. And the next summer, I would go. My sister never got a chair because they thought she was too young to fly a plane by herself. So, yeah, I was flying there by myself at eight. But they always had um, a worker, right? A stewardess. You know, they would take me on the plane. I would sit down. Um, I was supposed to remain in my seat. Then a stewardess would take me off the plane and go to where we meet my parents. But we had heard about this drink, Mount Dew, from my brother. And it, they were saying it was, oh, yeah, Mount Dew. And I was excited. And I, I didn't wait for no stewardess. I got off the plane, I seen my dad, and I went running, and I said, Yahoo! Mountain Dew! And you could hear me through the whole airport, because I, I do have a loud voice, I know that. Um, then the stewardess came out, and it was like a sign of relief. She's like, where's the kid? She went to get me, and I wasn't in my seat. And I gotten off, there was a group of people that other students might have thought I was with them, you know. But yeah. But when I was 13, I went. At that point, I didn't have a um, stewardess there. I was old hand at flying on the airplane. And uh, I just refused to come back. I just called my mother and said, I'm not coming back. I'm living with my dad. My mom should have pressed it in the divorce. She got custody. He got no visitation rights. He got to see us because my mom didn't agree with that and she let him. I always told her, I said, you should have never let us. That's a whole nother story and I ain't getting into it ever on my channel. And then I came back when I was 15, or kicked out, basically, and um, by this time, I was, you know, when I went to live with him, I was 13, 5'8", and I weighed 70 pounds. You would thought I was starving. But I hit puberty, honey. And it was all over. Because I guess from the Smith side, you stayed slim. My biology father, he never did get... Anyways, so I came back. I was heavyweight. <coughs> Weighed 211 pounds. Um, I stayed with my mom till I was... Basically, my senior year at high school... I went back to live with my father. I really didn't want to, but I, it was like it was suspected. I was a daddy's girl, family played favorites. My brother was Tim's favorite. Tim was mom's favorite. I was Charles' favorite. What are you doing? Had to honk at him to get him to freaking move. Okay, I'm gonna have to get out of the car. I'll be right back, folks. Okay, I'm back. Just did a little grocery shopping.
yesterday I spent 150. I just went spent 120, but five of it. I guess they got a food drive or something. You buy a bag of food. I don't know what's that's a share. Why not? But Thanksgiving is really one of my favorite holidays. I could just go ahead and ignore it. But my mother, she she wants Thanksgiving. And so I'm spending a little bit extra. On food. Oops. But she's 85 years old, so if she wants Thanksgiving, I will. I know. I bought the smallest turkey. That I can possibly buy thirty freaking dollars. She wants the whole treatment. I don't know how to make a stuffy. I just bought the box kite. She's going to have to tolerate that. A key lamp. Oops. Key lamp pie. So she's getting that. I'm not sure what to add to it. I gotta try to find some um, kind of vegetable thing to put with it that's a little more um, fancy. Hold on a minute. Hello, would you be using your mobile app today? No, I just want a large Coke to go. A large Coke? Okay, come on around to the window, thank you. And uh, only fast food place even near us, and even it's 10 miles away. I don't know, green bean casserole? I'm just not sure. But she's going to have it. Now for the giveaway. The giveaway is a Christmas giveaway. It is going to last a month. You got to be registered. After this load up, um, if I can get the Google document, you know, where you put your name, I will link it down below. So if it's not there, come back later and check it and, um, write your information down there. Okay. You have a large coat? Yeah. That'll be 193. Here you go. And the drawing will be on um, December 1st. And I bet you all wondering what it is. It is going to be the biggest giveaway. Thank you. That I have ever done. You ready? A drafting table.
you must now for the drafting table you must be in the u.s yeah yep and if you're outside of the united states it will be a gift certificate now my winner from last month i'm gonna be contacting you because we gotta find you a gift certificate so if you are out of the united states you will get a you ready? A hundred and fifty dollar gift certificate to TSA. That's right. Now, the thing is, if you have a drafted table and you're not wanting a new one, I will give you the option for a TSA gift card. And what you got to do is screenshot me. I got this friend from Donna to make sure you're subbed because this is a very big, big, big giveaway. Screenshot our Use your camera, take a picture, show them that you are sub, and email it to me at dreamercraftcorner at yahoo.com. I will put the link. I should put my email in the links, but I don't. But it'll be in the description box below. And you email me that picture okay and that is gonna be it for today so happy diamond painting happy thanksgiving and i will catch y'all later <laughs>